Hi, this is Justin Hibbert, and you're listening to Why Catholic, my podcast about the what and why of Catholicism. At least once a month, I plan to do a special episode where I highlight a particular feast day or a particular saint on their feast day. And if you're not familiar with the Catholic liturgical calendar, I think the liturgical calendar is a wonderful way to redeem each and every day and to celebrate these faithful Christians who have gone before us, as well as God's redemptive work throughout the year. As this podcast is being released on September 9th, this episode will be about the extraordinary life of St. Peter Claver. Since Peter Claver was from Spain, if it's all right with you, I'd like to use the Spanish form of his name, Pedro Claver, rather than anglicizing it. It's just something I like to do whenever possible. Pedro Claver was born in 1580 to a prosperous family in the devout Catholic village of Verdú, Spain, which is in the northeastern province of Catalonia. He attended college in the University of Barcelona, and it was there that this intellectual and pious young man became acquainted with the Society of Jesus, also known as the Jesuits. And after four years at the university, Pedro Claver was admitted into the Order of the Jesuits. Between 1602 and 1604 in Tarragona, he completed his novitiate, which is his novice or initial period within the order. Afterwards, he finished his studies in humanities at the Jesuit College of Gerona. Pedro Claver often wrote meditations and reflections in his notebook, and there's one particular passage that would foreshadow the rest of his life. He wrote, quote, I must dedicate myself to the service of God until death, on the understanding that I am like a slave, wholly occupied in the service of his master, and in the endeavor to please and content him in all and in every way with his whole soul, body, and mind, end quote. Like a slave. Those proved to be prophetic words. At that time, on the other side of the world, the Atlantic slave trade was becoming a large enterprise. Pedro Claver's country of Spain was heavily invested in the colonization of the New World, as well as in the slave trade. There was something about this idea of slavery that stirred Pedro's heart. Between 1605 and 1608, Pedro Claver went to Mallorca in the Spanish Balearic Islands to study philosophy. It was here that he grew close to a very holy man, 65 years his senior, named Alfonso Rodriguez. Rodriguez took Claver under his wing and encouraged his younger Jesuit brother to be a missionary in the Spanish New World. Pedro Claver at first resisted. He wanted to be a layperson. He didn't consider himself worthy of the honor to be a priest. However, in 1608, his superiors sent him back to Barcelona to begin theological studies. Before he could finish, Pedro Glaver was on a boat and headed to the New World, arriving in 1611 in the port city of Cartagena, New Granada, which is in modern-day Colombia. In the New World, Claver went to Bogota and then to Tunja and then back to Cartagena, where he was ordained a priest on March 19, 1616. At that time in Cartagena, there was a fellow Jesuit priest named Father Alonso de Sandoval, who was well known for his mission and humanitarian work among the imported slaves from Africa. Sandoval wrote a manual for the missionaries called The Nature, Religion, Customs, Rights, and Superstitions of the Negroes, in which he meticulously documented the 40 different races and 15 different languages of the African slaves. His work was invaluable in assisting translators and facilitating the identities of these slaves and giving these workers a foundation for working with the slaves as well. Father Alonso de Sandoval laid the groundwork for Pedro Claver, who spent 35 years as a missionary amongst the slaves. Not once did Pedro miss a slave ship coming into the port of Cartagena. He called the slaves, quote, human treasures, and he wouldn't even wait for the slaves to disembark. He would run into the stench of the disease-ridden vessel and administer care to any that needed help. Pedro Claver would even give up his garments in administering first aid. One eyewitness noted, quote, Most admirable was that he not only cleansed these plague-ridden ulcers with the two handkerchiefs he kept for that, but did not hesitate to press his lips to them, end quote. Pedro never hesitated to give up his own cloak, which needed to be washed as much as seven times a day to rid it from the stench and filth that it had accumulated. Pedro joyfully did what others felt was extremely repugnant because he saw Christ in the least of the slaves. While Pedro Claver administered physical aid to these slaves, he also administered spiritual aid as well. However, he lived by the motto that, quote, we must speak to them with our hands before we try to speak to them with our lips, end quote. 
The journey from Africa to the New World was brutal, with an estimated death rate of 25% aboard these slave ships. Concerned for the children on the verge of death, Pedro baptized them. He would take care of the sick, and then he would hear confessions among the Christian slaves. And he would catechize the non-Christian slaves, baptize them, and instruct them further. The language barrier was a challenge, and so Pedro worked with a team of black interpreters, as well as using images to convey the gospel message. In the springtime, Pedro Claver traveled to the plantations where he refused the luxurious accommodations of the plantation owners, opting instead to sleep in the slave quarters, often on the floor. He regularly visited the leper colony at San Lazaro Royal Hospital, reminding the patients to, quote, make a life, a ladder to heaven, Leprosy of the body does not matter if the soul is clean, end quote. He also frequented the hospital of San Sebastian, which belonged to the brothers of St. John of God. Here he would sweep floors, make beds, serve meals, and provide spiritual guidance to the patients. He also used his notebooks to catalog the patients so he could remember to follow up with them on future visits. Pedro Claver was no stranger to the prisoners, particularly those condemned to die for their crimes. One witness noted, quote, He was so devoted to his ministry that there was no one condemned by the courts in his day whom he did not assist, end quote. And when a Spanish would capture a French or English heretic, Pedro Claver was there to patiently present them with the truth, goodness, and beauty of the Catholic faith. Pedro Claver was so devoted to his priestly duties that he would sometimes spend as much as 15 hours hearing confessions in a stifling, hot, and humid confessional. During Lent one year, he heard an astounding 5,000 confessions. Where did Pedro Claver get all the time to do this? According to eyewitnesses, he only slept three hours a day and prayed for five consecutive hours before commencing his day's work a regiment he kept up for nearly 40 years. His constant companion, Brother Gonzalez, noted, quote, each day he did at least one heroic deed, end quote. During his years of missionary work, Pedro Claver survived five devastating epidemics, but the fifth took a toll on him. His hands trembled so much that he could no longer say mass, and he was generally inactive for the last four years of his life. Ironically, during those final years, he was put under the care of a cruel black slave who tormented and mistreated him. Pedro Claver died in utter abandonment on September 8, 1654, at the age of 74. After his death, people remembered him for the heroic saint he was. In fact, people rushed to grab relics of him, whether it was tearing off pieces of his clothes or even creepier trying to grab pieces of his toenails or simply touching the rosaries to his body. On account of his great service, he was given a burial paid for by the public, and he is interred at the altar of the church that bears his name, La Iglesia de San Pedro Claver in Cartagena, Colombia. Pedro Claver was beatified by Pope Pius IX on September 21, 1851, and on January 15, 1888, Pedro Claver, along with his friend and spiritual mentor, Alfonso Rodriguez, were canonized by Pope Leo XIII. Eight years later, Pope Leo XIII named Claver the patron of all the missions to the Negroes, noting, quote, No life except for the life of Christ has so moved me as that of St. Pedro Claver, end quote. Pedro Claver's own motto was slave of the Negroes forever. As he desired in his formative years, he truly became a slave for God. And as his biographer Angel Valtierra noted, in order to serve the slaves, he became their slave. Like Jesus, Pedro came not to be served, but to serve, for he truly believed in the slave's capacity for virtue, for faithfulness, and for holiness. It is estimated that Pedro Claver instructed and baptized 300,000 African slaves. Let me end with this prayer. O Lord, our perfect example, even though you have everything, you humbled yourself and became a servant even unto death. Your generosity inspires those like Pedro Claver to pour out their lives like fragrant perfume. Teach us, Lord, that in washing the feet of the least in our society, we are in fact washing your feet. Give us the courage to run to the outcast, the abused, the marginalized, in order that we might instill in them a sense of dignity and divine purpose. Help us continue Pedro Claver's work of tearing down racial barriers and fighting against systemic racial injustices. Teach us, like Pedro Claver, to see your face in the face of others and to pour out our lives 
for their salvation. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. St. Pedro Claver, pray for us. This has been a special episode of Why Catholic? I, I don't know about you, but St. Pedro Claver answers that question for me. Why Catholic? St. Pedro Claver. What a legacy. On the Instagram account, Why Catholic Podcast, I've posted a picture in a short bio of St. Pedro Claver. Again, you can find that on the Instagram account, Why Catholic Podcast, all one word. Don't miss the next episode of Why Catholic. Make sure to subscribe to Why Catholic on your podcast platform of choice. And thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Justin Hibbard, and this is Why Catholic. <laughs>